Hello everyone. It is May 1st, May Day, for all of you out there in internet land. And this is Take the Gate. And I'm reporting about this article on Agency France Press on something called Repost, which I did see reposted on another site, Crooks and Lives. However, the issue of the article is that the urban areas are seeing rise in sex trafficking of children, and it was dated April 29th, 2014. I don't think that there's an author to be said. But I'm just going to leave a link so that everyone can read this, as you can see here. And this is mostly the counties reporting this issue, and I guess the counties are playing catch-up. My question is, solving these issues, and there are people making money off of this as agencies? This is the area in Cincinnati, Ohio, that has been plagued by the scourge of modern-day human trafficking or prostitution, as the politicians would like to call it. They've hung a banner, basically pointing out the problems of the man surrounding the neighborhood. And this is the corner where most of this happens in this particular area thousands drive by every day and know what's going on and can not really do anything about it and I'm sure the police wanted to do something about it and the city wanted to do something about it for years but now they are tackling the issue they have placed this gigantic barrier directly up the street from the neighborhood where this directly affects and most of these neighborhoods have the lowest property values in the Cincinnati area and have pretty much closed the houses around here and then some of these children have to jump over the barrier as you see for their path I guess because they're running through physical education down the street here so this barrier is most likely in their way. It's been a while coming now and annoying as this is for the drivers here in Cincinnati. I know why they did it. I know how they did it. And the problem will just move down the road as it typically seems to do. I don't know if they put cameras around here. I don't know if those cameras are taking down license plates of individuals who stop and get into the cars of those people but the city council has taken a hard line against the prostitution here in Cincinnati and they've come up with a plan that is hopefully a game changer and can shut down a lot of the problems that are associated with child prostitution here in Cincinnati some of the plans would include treatment programs, prostitution court, publishing the names of John, identifying who the main people are and putting them into a sort of remedial school for Johns and pimps. I don't know if this will help the situation, but it couldn't hurt the situation. So, everyone, I'm going to take you to the press conference now. So I'm just going to let this clip run out and I'll take you to the press conference. Um, the issue of human trafficking here in Cincinnati, it's here, it's in our neighborhoods, and um, our coalition and the Salvation Army are there to provide information, support the community in their legislative policy and other efforts in um, combating the issue, and also to support and empower the survivors so that they can get resources that they need. We are here because Ohio ranks fifth worst in the United States for human trafficking. Um,
The death just recently of Jessica Ravel on January 9, 2014, highlights this issue, and I don't know if you all remember, but she was just 24 years old when she was shot in the head and found in the middle of McMicken Street. She was involved in prostitution and drugs, had a long arrest record which consisted of solicitation and drug charges. The tragedy serves as a reminder to all of us how important this work is and how much to So we are here today to announce what we believe is just a very important development of work that's been going on for a very, very long time in our community. Um, we are here to talk about human trafficking, sex trafficking to be specific. Um, or 88% of human trafficking in Ohio is for sex. And about 84% of the victims are U.S. citizens. So we know about the international ramifications of this, but this is a very much a domestic problem. Um, about 80% of the victims are women or girls, and about 50% are children. And the most common age of entry into sex trafficking is actually 13 years old. So the majority of these um, women that you see out on the streets have been victimized. Um, some studies say as many as 95% of individuals engaging in commercial sex have been previously abused. And so that's important to remember when we're thinking about how to respond to this issue. So those barricades on McMicken are probably the most visible thing you've seen that we've done. But we've been working on this for months. Um, we think that the, the barricades will serve two main purposes. One is to do exactly what you said, is to interrupt that drive and that traffic flow of these jobs, the pattern that they get into when they go down McMicken Street and pick up these women and want to leave the area very quickly. It's going to interrupt that pattern. It's also going to form some cul-de-sacs. And that's going to give people some ownership of blocks of McMicken. And we feel when people take ownership of McMicken, they're really going to care about what they see that's going on there. Just in my block alone, there have been middle of the night activities that have awakened the neighbors and brought us outside. A neighbor framing a car T-boned by a drunk man with a prostitute in his car. Both fled the scene and abandoned the car in the middle of the street, as well as a half-nude prostitute high on drugs, smashing through a neighbor's glass front door. But we live here, um, and when you know a prostitute is thrown into your glass window or your front door and there's blood on your porch, I mean, it's hard to live. And so we heard countless stories recounted. We saw, we saw journal articles of people who have been keeping track. We saw pictures um, that will horrify you of what's happening with these women. We've got um, a drop-in program where people can come to get a hot meal and connect with resources like Off the Streets and MCCAT. They can get yeah, detox services for me, for me for everything for our hotline. Neighborhood. As a homeowner coming and going on the street, you can feel uncomfortable <coughs> and unsafe just right outside your front door if some kind of transaction is going on nearby. It is frightening and depressing to see the shape the women, often just girls, are in. They are obviously. Drug addicted and desperate, often obscenely dressed and crudely contorting their bodies to attract customers. Human trafficking has absolutely exploded in our neighborhood at this time. It has overwhelmed and overtaken our community, and frankly, we are outnumbered in this battle. The women that we're talking about are often victims of childhood abuse, trauma, certainly victims of crime, but they're also people's mothers, sisters, aunts cousins, neighbors, best friends. These are women who really are in a desperate way. We provide housing and supportive services, connecting women to a variety of community-based services. And as I said, we opened the doors in 2006. We have served over 600 women in that period of time. We can't do it alone. We have also worked with um, West McMicken Community Civic Association because we know that this is an issue that our message is, let's continue this collaborative to really reach out and Because of the symptoms of the problems of the foster care abuse and child sex abuse system and prescription drug abuse system. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the latest report. Prescription drug abuse in the foster care system is rampant. And I'm about to show you. So this goes back to 2011 where we have been over medicating and sometimes prescribing medications to foster care children that don't need to be on drugs 
and this shuts them up from all the child abuse that they've undergone inside the foster care system or at home and what this is doing is churning out more child sex abuse victims uh, a lot of the times the foster care workers turn a blind eye to the abuse of these children and the latest most likely would be Arizona where most of the cases of child abuse went underreported or not reported at all and then these poor children with post-traumatic stress disorder have been abused by the system so much that they need an escape and the only way that they can escape is through our CIA funded and corporate funded drug importation cartel that ships drugs from South America or overseas into the United States um, here's one example that may or may not be truthful and it was posted by the Daily Mail which I don't really put a lot of faith in but it's good to keep notice of these things when they happen that basically in North Korea the drug is given out which is crystal meth like candy <clears throat> and some say this is why it has such a hard grip on the country so I just want everybody to be aware of this so what does this importation have to do with the United States well the triads also work with the United States they're all doing drugs behind the scenes so like say for instance our armed forces we are guarding the Taliban poppy fields overseas in Afghanistan when we went into the war in Afghanistan the Taliban had nearly wiped it out and then we went in there and then the warlords restarted their poppy program the poppy fields are basically what you need to create heroin and heroin is not the same as marijuana it's not the same as anything remotely as hard as meth but we have a heroin epidemic and now Europe has one and when the Taliban turned off the poppy fields all of a sudden two towers blow up and we're under soft martial law three years later coincidence I think not welcome back to Fox and Friends Dave Briggs he's Clayton Moore she's Allison Camerata we're gonna head to Afghanistan this morning one of the biggest obstacles in front of the US troops there in Afghanistan is the opium trade the Taliban is using it to intimidate the population yeah. joining us from Helmand province is Geraldo Rivera you're guarding these poppy fields and then in turn expecting this drug not to filter back into the United States so these children get post-traumatic stress disorder and in turn it creates a demand for drugs a demand for child prostitution and a demand for drugs and then the social services agencies come in and take advantage of the situation not unlike our court system and legal system and our law enforcement system and our judicial system which we call the prison industrial complex and lastly but not least the final major straw for all this the final major straw is our elected representatives will turn on the public and I'm about to show you where and this is on think progress so this is what they have planned for your children when your children are poor they have nowhere to live they will spend six months in prison a new bill that was passed last Tuesday HB 1158 in Louisiana will make it a misdemeanor punishable with a maximum fine of up to $200 and six months in jail 
The bill is targeted not just at panhandlers, but hitchhikers and those engaged in prostitution. The bill will ban panhandling. So, they're going to put your children, when they get older, when they no longer have a job, when they no longer can afford to take care of themselves, or they have been removed from your custody and put into the foster care abuse system, then put on drugs, then arrested, given a felony, made homeless, or a misdemeanor, and then made homeless, living on the streets, had their life destroyed by this justice system, by these Ivy League schools, by those politicians and the lawyers, and the law enforcement, prison industrial complex. This is the new Jim Crow, commercial reasonableness. They will give your child a $200 fine and six months in prison. And if they cannot pay that $200 because they are homeless, they will have to go back to prison. And that interest can be charged while they stay there, and they can be charged for the amount of time they stayed there. And when they can't pay it back, then they get a felony record, and then they get put back into the prison. And this just will repeat and repeat and repeat. Just like Orwell's boot stomping on the face of humanity over and over again. So I want to be clear. I want to be everybody to be clear about this. Why is a guy on the internet without a budget able to put this stuff together, but the mainstream media is silent? Think about it. This is a soft martial law, people. This is a Jim Crow. This is their central planning. And it's very clear you are not part of it. This is Take the Gate. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe. This is the area in Cincinnati, Ohio that has been plagued by the scourge of modern day human trafficking or prostitution as the politicians would like to call it. They've hung a banner basically pointing out the problems of the modern issue and surrounding neighborhood. And this is the corner where most of this happens. In this particular area, thousands drive by every day and know what's going on and can't really do anything about it. And I'm sure the police wanted to do something about it and the city wanted to do something about it for years, but now they are tackling the issue. They have placed this gigantic barrier directly up the street from the neighborhood where this directly affects. And most of these neighborhoods have the lowest property values in the Cincinnati area and have pretty much closed the houses around here. And then some of these children have to jump over the barrier, as you see, for their path, I guess, because they're running through physical education down the street here. So this barrier is most likely in their way. And it's been a while coming now, and annoying as this is for the drivers here in Cincinnati, I know why they did it, I know how they did it, and the problem will just move down the road as it typically seems to do. I don't know if they put cameras around here, I don't know if those cameras are taking down license plates of individuals who stop and get into the cars of those people, but the city council has taken a hard line against the prostitution here in Cincinnati and they've come up with a plan that is hopefully a game changer and can shut down a lot of the problems that are associated with child prostitution here in Cincinnati. 
So I'm just going to let this clip run out, and I'll take you to the press conference and the plan. Well, some of the plan would indicate the changes, treatment programs. Some of the plans would include treatment programs, prostitution court, publishing the names of Johns, identifying who the main people are and putting them into a sort of remedial school for Johns and pimps. I don't know if this will help the situation, but it couldn't hurt the situation. So, everyone, I'm going to take you to the press conference now.